Hey guys, it's Marty from OwingsArt.com and today we're going to take a look at two different types of koi watercolors. These are made by Sakura, the people who brought you the Sakura Micron pen, which many uh, pen and ink artists use and uh, it's quite um, famous. Anyway, um, this particular watercolor uh, comes in two different forms. A pocket box with some little uh, pans of color and it also comes in tubes. And what's really interesting about the difference in that is that um, the pocket box here is made in China, but the tubes of paint are still made in Japan. And today we'll take a look at all this stuff and we'll also compare the paints to see if there's any difference at all or perceptible difference between the paints made in China that come in these little pans and the paints made in the tubes. Now a quick look at the pocket box just initially and you know, we'll talk about this more but it comes in a uh, plastic container. Uh, I, if you've watched my videos before you know I prefer the tin or metal but it also comes with a pocket brush, a little pocket pen. Here you can fill with water and use that there. It comes with a sponge and of course the pans of paint. Um, so here are a few more details. Like I said both of these different types of watercolors are made in Japan and China. Um, they meet these non-toxic toxicity standards, but um, I couldn't find a ton of detail on that. Uh, I would go check their safety data sheets uh, if you're really, really interested in like the chemical composition, stuff like that. But the important part is it meets the ACMI standard. Um, so it comes with, uh, like I said, that dabbing sponge and, and the brush, which is nice. Um, that's handy to have. And not uh, very many kits come with that. Uh, little brush so I think that was kind of a cool touch by Sakura to include that and just a quick mention that the price point on this is really low so about $17 you're all in for 17 bucks and you know like I said I prefer the metal tins because they're a little bit more durable over time and they don't you don't just don't have as much trouble with them but that said if you're gonna have a low price point you've got to save money somewhere and I think this is where Sakura uh, saves the money on, on this little pocket box. Like I said, the, the water pen is kind of a cool addition that not a lot of pocket box kits come with, so a lot of times that's going to be a separate expense for you. Um, and, and so that's just kind of a nice added benefit there. And you know, I did eventually try out the pen and it worked nicely. I'll also be using this Isabe uh, number no. 5 mop brush today when I get to uh, the Sakura koi paints in the tubes. But right now I'm just going to swatch out some of the color and um, it comes with a Chinese white, an ivory black, a Prussian blue, cobalt blue hue, viridian hue, a yellow green, a light red, a vermilion, a crimson lake, a yellow ochre, a deep yellow, and a lemon yellow as well. So um, it's, it's pretty standard. It's a pretty standard uh, variety of paints you get in any 12 paint kit. A lot of them will call these different names, but they're basically uh, essentially the same colors or same combinations of colors. You just start to notice this over time as you um, work with more and more uh, watercolor paints. So like the white is hard to see on the white paper, but it went down uh, pretty nicely. And I see some, a little bit uh, of transparency in that paint. It depends on how watered down you get it but um, I like that so far initially and the blue are the uh, I'm sorry the yellows are really bright um, both the yellow and that orangish yellow which they call a deep yellow sort of pop as as do the blues and reds so um, initial thoughts about how these colors swatched out was excellent I, I like them a lot um, I know other people on, in other reviews have commented that maybe they're a little bit more, there's a graininess to them, but I didn't experience that uh, in testing those. So remember the pocket box was made in China, and these tubes here are made in Japan. So if you buy the tubes, which by the way you can use to refill the paint in your pocket box, um, this you'll get paints made in Japan. and. Uh, don't pay too much attention to how these are going down wet because I think they need to dry uh, for you to get the full uh, effect or to notice if there's any difference really in the paints at all. 
So, cause they're always gonna look a little bit more vibrant when they go on wet and then they, they dry a little bit lighter. And, you know, so after these dried, I took a real close look at them and basically what I can tell you is I noticed that there's a slightly deeper uh, colors in tubes in the tube paints than there was in the pocket box. I did notice that and I so there's a slight difference I think maybe in the quality of the paints but otherwise they were fairly comparable. So now let's put these up against some of the other paints that um, that you can see on my channel that I've reviewed in the past or that you may use on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first one I'll look at is the um, Windsor & Newton Cotman which is a student grade uh, basically a student grade watercolor and you can see they're they're superior to those just initially you know you can just glance and tell um, so let's take another look at like a Grumbacher which might be a more student grade uh, that particular paint was and, and and you can see a big difference now these are Korean watercolors the missions which I just reviewed not long ago on the channel so if you want to look at those you can go and check that video out but um, they tend to be a little bit more transparent, I think, than the missions are. And um, but the missions are great paints as well. But the cost proposition on these is just um, is just awesome. So I'll talk more about that as we wrap up. But here are the Sennelier's. These are French-made paints, and the, it's hard to find better paints than Sennelier's or the Schmenka, the very fine German-made paints, which are right here. Those are the paints I use every day and. I swatched those out in 2014 and this thing has sat in the sun and there's really no reduction in, in color quality at all. Uh, and that's, you know, almost, well, it's at least two years ago, almost three. So uh, those are good paints. Uh, these Koi's just out of the tube though are very comparable. This Dyler, Dyler and Rowney paints, like people will thumb their nose up at these paints because they're, they generally tend to be student grade, but not the Aquafine. I would say the Aquafine are really pretty much artist grade uh, and they've held up as well in my light fast test. So I can recommend those as well, but even those, the these Koi's are pretty comparable. Um, here's the Lucas Aquarell 1862 watercolor paints, which are affordable. I'd say they're more of a mid-range artist paint. They're not super, cheap like these are but they are pretty inexpensive um, and here's the Holbein which are Japanese different Japanese paint um, and these tend to be like more opaque and I think I mentioned that in the review I did on them and they even have a sheen to them and you can see that although the colors look more vibrant it acts more like uh, maybe a gouache than a watercolor paint and here's some Kiritaki Gansai Tombi paints which I just reviewed on the channel and you can see here um, they're probably equal to uh, those in terms of just overall vibrancy and sort of the pop, the pop in the in the color, if that's what interests you. So here's an overall look at these. So a uh, color is great, um, not real opaque, but that's not what you want super transparent watercolors for. So very high transparency, good dispersion. Um, easy to blend these paints and get different colors. I tried a few different uh, ways to do that and was excellent. But the bottom line really is the value proposition on these. If you think about this for a second, you're getting 12, 12 milliliter tubes. So you're getting a, a, a dozen 12 milliliter tubes of really high quality Japanese watercolor paint for less than two bucks a tube. I mean, it makes me want to go out and buy like a case of these in case they stop making them in Japan or something like that. Because unless there's a ton of fugitive colors or they don't really hold up in my light fast tests, which I believe they will do just fine because I've done some research on these that suggest they, they're, they're really good watercolors. Uh, barring that, I mean, I can't believe the value. It's just awesome. Well, don't forget to subscribe, comment. I always love to hear from you guys and share the video if you liked it. This has been Marty for OwingsArt.com with a look at the Sakura Koi watercolors. Have a great day, everybody. So long for now.